On this episode of Ghost Hunters International, the team makes their first trip to Spain to investigate the former home of a bizarre occultist. He absolutely believed that the devil was here. When the disturbed master of this castle was found dead, was it suicide or murder? If you did kill yourself, why? Will Dustin and Rob face the devil to find the truth about the Castillo Corsera? Where is this Satan? Sound like a grunt. Then, G.H.I. visits a medieval tower in Catalonia with a problem that can only be solved. All right, so here's the question for you. In Spain? Okay. With a call to Rhode Island. I thought I saw a shadow. It moved. Okay, let's go up there. And Angela catches a breath that is not her own. Did you hear it? Straight ahead. started i understand angela you have some big news for us yes i am now in the yeah. well from the lead car dustin myself and brandy a big congratulations we're very excited for you thank you guys i appreciate it and now with no further ado brandy will let us know exactly what we're up against here in spain Hey guys, we're headed to the Castillo Corsera. This castle was constructed in the 14th century, and it's seen its fair share of infamous people, including Napoleon. During the reign of King Felipe II, a soothsayer had claimed that the castle was cursed. The apparent curse is believed to have lasted all the way up until the 1980s, when a man was found dead in the castle. And some say he committed suicide, while others believe that it was murder. Well, it's a good, sounds like a good case, good history to it. Looking forward to getting over there and finding out exactly what we've got. Ooh, I think this has got to be it. Bill. Hi. Rob. How are you? How are you doing? Good. How are you? Hi, Hi there. Dustin. Hi, Dustin. How are you doing? Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. If you could tell us some of the history, that'd be great. At the end of the 1300s, Alvaro La Luna built this place. He was a sheriff of the area for that time. So, I mean, he's going to have brought people here, hung them, chopped their heads off, tortured them. We understand that there was one gentleman who resided here who may have played a part in some cultism. The last owner of the place He's a weird guy. He'd spent a lot of time in the occult. A castle like this, you can close the doors, invite your friends in, and you can do whatever you want to do. And in 1985, he died. Do you mind showing us around? I'd be delighted. Uh, Spanish Admiral Baron Conde de Lirio. He bought the castle in the 1920s, and he built this chapel. His brothers were also in the military, who died apparently in an airplane crash. And he buried them in this wall. But what seems very weird to me is why would he bury his two brothers in the wall? And why aren't the tombstones marking where he put his two brothers? A film director heard screams coming from inside the chapel. It was during the filming of Mark of the Wolfman. It was around 6 o'clock in the evening, and there was no one here except me and my makeup artist. I believe most of the time we were there by the chapel, and we heard many screams, profound, long screams, from a woman. So the next location? The tower, which is where the last private owner apparently shot himself. When he came here with his money, looking to buy a castle, he walked in here and said, right, this is the one I want. So at some level he was drawn to this location? 
Yeah, there was a spiritual reason for him. And then he absolutely believed that the devil was here. And a lot of people would think that's a bad thing. But if you're into the occult, having the devil in your living room is most probably quite a good thing. Mm. And his death apparently was here, shot himself in the head. So Bill, has anyone heard anything around here? Three or four people say they heard footsteps with no apparent source. Any voice? Yeah, there was a voice saying, get me out of here. Right, so should we head on? Yeah, leaving the tower now, and we're going out into what is called the parapets. The last private owner would often see a soldier, but in chain mail and armor, moving along the wall, going that way, and then coming back again. Okay, well, let's now go down to the wine cellar, which was also used as a prison. This is in the base of the tower. Who would be kept in the prisons? Enemies from neighboring villages, or maybe somebody who's not practicing their religion properly. From here, there have been reports of masonry, i.e. floors, tiles, literally being carried up into a beam of light. Yeah, we'll definitely have to come through and check this out later on. For me, it's a fascinating place historically, with a lot of stories I doubt the paranormal I find fascinating here. Hopefully you're going to get some results. Absolutely. Well, we got a lot of setting up to do. Start tracking down some of these stories, see what's going on around here. Bill, thank you for the tour. We haven't dealt with anything quite like this before. Satanism, the occult, all mixed with some pretty incredible stories of ghostly activity. Team's gonna need to work around the weather a bit. It has been raining on and off. The chapel that's still here in the yard uh, that was built by the Admiral apparently has his two uh, deceased brothers buried within the walls. There's reports of screams there. So that's something we really want to listen for. There we go. Tonight we're introducing a new piece of equipment. It's called an EMF listener. We have equipment already with us which will monitor and let us know when we have EMF signals around us. But never before have we had the opportunity to actually listen to them. Now with this device we have the opportunity where we can listen to those different fields and what they sound like. So Barry, you want to let everyone know exactly what we're shooting for here? Okay, we've got two cameras set up. Uh, the first camera is pointing out toward the battlements where the last owner claimed that he had seen an old soldier. The second camera is up in the living room. The devil himself is said to make an appearance here. Barry, I'd like you to bring, if you could, your new EMF listener. listener. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Combine that with the thermal. All right, get the lights out and we should be ready to go. Gentlemen, I think it's Satan's Tower time. Let's go to work. And we're moving up to the living room area. We're working on the thermal sweep. Our camera. Our camera there. Yeah. How goes it, Barry? There's something unusual over here, Rob. That's what's designed to do, is to pick up the weak fields. What was that? Get the thermal can. Get the strawberries animals. I don't see anything. I heard something over there. All right, you know what? We're measuring heat when we should be obviously measuring sound at the moment. So if you power down, yeah. EVP session, Barry, Dustin, and Rob in what was the living room. I was up at the top of the stairs. So we started on the full spectrum camera. I was in a position there where I could shoot down into this entire room. So if there was anything moving down here, I certainly we would have picked it up. You good, Barry? Yeah. All right. We understand that there was one gentleman who killed himself here. There's a lot of questions about what happened in this room. Come join us. 
Can you speak to us so that we might hear you? There aren't any reports that this particular owner exists here as a spirit. However, I think that given his background of occultism, Satan worshiping, the possibility exists that he may still be around these grounds. All I have to do, speak right here. So what happened here? We're listening to you. Can you please speak to us? If nothing else, we're here so that you have someone to talk to. I'm hearing things moving behind me. I'm just not quite sure the way it sounds running. I wasn't sure if they were coming from behind me or from the stairwell. 360 mic was with me. The 360 mic has four onboard mics. This gives me the ability to record in four different directions. And when I apply this recording to the software in the GHI computer, I'm able to tell the direction that it comes from. It's anything that will be recorded in that. If there is some dark power here with us now, we know the previous residents seemed to think that there was some dark force that resided here. I heard a strange noise coming up here. I heard it. I definitely heard it. it sounded like a grunt or something. Yeah, yeah. It sounded like a guttural sound. If there is some dark power here with us now, we know the previous residents seemed to think that there was some dark force that resided here. I heard a strange noise coming up here. I heard it. I definitely heard it. it sounded like a grunt or something. Yeah, yeah. It sounded like a guttural sound. Early on into the investigation, Barry, Dustin, and I heard some sounds in the living room area. These kind of guttural sounds may be an indication that it's possible there's activity here. We're making a reach out. For the entity that was known locally as being Satan, are you willing to come forward tonight? Walk right up to us now. Show that you are a man. Barry, that's you, right? I'm not moving. Huh? I'm not moving. The big knot. No, nothing to do with me. I thought mm -hmm. he was coming from down there. Wasn't us. No. You heard it though, right? Yeah. Where is this Satan? I know before they used to worship you. No one here to worship you now. We wish to call upon the last owner. If you're still trapped in these walls, and you are able to understand this. Who is the name of the person who killed you? The only legacy you're left with as being some kind of devil-worshipping sadist. How are we looking up there, Barry? Everything seems pretty still, Rob. All right, let's give the other team a chance to find out what's going on. Watch your step. There's a pool right here, so... Okay. Thanks, Brandy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this goes up pretty high. Ooh, be careful here. Where did he say the floors? Towards the oh, back. There's a... Okay. See right there. Oh, whoa. <laughs> yeah, that would hurt. Oh, my gosh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Oh, my goodness. That's a pretty good drop. EVP session on the upstairs, the living room. room. Are you the man that they found here? And if you did kill yourself, why? If you didn't take your own life, could you tell us who did? I know, at least for me, I'm totally okay with you coming right up to me and touching me. So please, just don't hold back. What's that? I heard that. It sounded like it came from my right hand side. Yeah. It did too. Is that was you? that just made that noise that we all heard. Can you make that noise again? You hear that? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
sounded like it came from this corridor right came here. This Same corridor? area, yeah. You know what, let me Ooh, does it open? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Cool. Just be careful. I don't know. I know that there's some construction stuff down here. Watch out, Joe. <laughs> How far does it go? Pretty, pretty much all the way down to the ground. Oh my God! Like, what are we talking? Like ten feet, twenty feet? Twenty feet or more? Wow! Oh my gosh! Yeah, it goes all the way down. EVP session end. I think we covered this pretty good. Let's see if we can reach these amigos that are bricked up in the wall. Where the brothers are supposed to be. It's just bizarre. It's strange. It doesn't make any sense. Dustin and I are running an EVP session in the chapel. Can you come forward to us now? If we're buried in the walls. We demand you come forward. Tell us your name. There's someone you forward now. Come closer to us so that we may know you are here. What was that? It's a lot of noise. Yeah. We moved to one of the rear chambers. It feels awfully different in here. Nice dark hiding spot. We've moved out of the light more into the darkness. Are you willing to come forward now? What is your name? And that's where we thought we heard something that sounded like a voice. I ask again, what is your name? You're going to continue to hide from us like a rat in the night. The noise coming from your side? We thought that we were hearing noises coming from both sides. That that response was the first time we asked for its name. It's Mm -hmm. Unlike anything I've ever really yeah. heard before. So we'll see if anything should show up during the analysis and take it from there. Dustin and I were in the battlements. I was up running some full spectrum shots to try and capture this alleged guard who was said to walk around the fortifications. Dustin and Barry, EVP session. Are there any soldiers here? And the one who was seen walking, was it your job to defend this castle? You feel as if you're still defending this place. Are you aware of the dark phantasma? It was said to be Susan. By using devices with red lights. Can you fall and speak into them? How long have you been here for? I just heard something. I thought I just heard someone say dog. By using devices, thread lights, come in forward and speak into them. How long have you been here for? I just heard something. I thought I just heard someone say no. Couldn't you tell where it's coming from? Over there. Dustin and I were on the battlements. I was up running some full spectrum shots. We pushed our EVP session to see if we could provoke anything. And that's where we thought we heard something that sounded like a voice. Are you able to come forward? Could I request that you make that sound again? Let me ask that you come forward. With the greatest of respect. Kiana Staki. Who is here? Is the entity still here? Yeah, there's two distinct knocks. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Come closer to us so that we may know you are here. I thought maybe it was that tin roof. Yeah, that's what I thought it might have been too. 
just better if I don't have to pick a point. Yeah. Hey, Barry, check this out. What were they saying about lights coming down from the heavens tonight? I ain't gonna get a shot at that. Yeah. Beams from heaven? What do you think of that? Action. Gosh. Get the lights on and meet back at Central Command. So we're wrapping up our investigation at Castillo Corsera. People heard whispers, voices, sounds. So it's important that we really make sure that because this is such a big outdoor open location, anything that we pick up, we're making that distinction. I'd like to say how impressed I am by the GHI people. I'm really glad they've been here, and I can't wait to see what results they've got for us. We're about to go into the analysis now of Castillo Carrocera, a wonderful little castle here in Spain. We were hearing things, shuffles of feet, movement. We're not quite sure what was going on. So there's going to be a heavy dependence on some of the audio that has been captured. Barry? Mm -hmm. I've just been going over the wireless mic set up in the chapel. That's right. I found something that sounds like footsteps. Good. Mm -hmm. Well. Okay. Yeah? It certainly does. <laughs> now, how long does this go on? Quite a while, but it's raining outside, and it seemed to dissipate when the rain dissipated. Right. Okay. I'm wondering, as you have stated, that the sound dissipates with the rain, mm -hmm. and for maybe looking at a damaged gutter mm -hmm. um, immediately outside the, the, the chapel, it's being a good picked idea. up with, yeah. with the mic. Okay. Okay. All right. Hey, uh, Barry, Angela Brandy, what I have here sounds like a scream. You gotta listen to it. All right. It's. Let's hear it. Well, you get no argument from me on that. Well, hello, guys. Hey, Bill. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. How does it all go? It actually went really well. Uh, we went through, we used all of our equipment. Yeah, we did go over everything that you told us uh, for the investigation. One thing I want to play for you is something that came out early on in our review of the evidence uh, from our wireless microphone, which we set up in the chapel area, looking for you know what we were told about the claims of the screen being. Yeah, yeah. I want to play this for you here and let you yeah. see what it sounds like. You know what? Sounds like footsteps. What we thought kind of sounded like footsteps, we actually figure out what that was. What it sounded like to me is rain. What we noticed before we met with you was that there are two drain spouts that come out the side of that chapel area. Right. And it was very rainy that evening, uh, so we actually just poured some water into those drain spouts to see what it would sound like hitting that concrete slab right outside the door, because that's where the wireless mic was set up. And sure enough, it makes that same kind of sound, that right. pitter-patter that goes on for a long time. So we kind of had to dismiss that one. I mean, that's, that's a big part of what we do, yeah, obviously. Yeah, sure. We matched up the audio um, just to be sure, and as the rain diminished, our phantom walker disappeared as <laughs> well. well. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we were able to clear that up, but there were some other things that were, were certainly curious as well. So one of the claims you told us was people were seeing masonry being carried up in a beam of light. Barry and I were actually out on the battlements and uh, looked up in the sky and there was this incredible scene and Barry was able to take a picture of it. So this is what we were able to capture there. Why didn't it me? 
This is the kind of thing that going back hundreds of years, if I saw that on a certain night and then heard the legends, that's something that would catch me off guard as well. Obviously, it's the moonlight shining through the clouds, but it was just very peculiar that you had mentioned that and we were able to see something that looked very similar, you know? That is a bit weird. Now, you want to talk about weird. <laughs> we got something else for you. I want to uh, play for you a piece of video. In the beginning of it, Barry and I are actually stepping out of the tower. I had our, our mini DV camera and we were stepping out to go take a look at this light. You'll hear me say a couple of phrases and there's something in the background that I want you to pay attention to. It's an interesting light formation, huh? Right after the sentence. After all they said about it. It's very faint, so I'm gonna play it for you again. Yeah. After all they said about it. You're going to hear there's a, a high pitch, what sounds like a scream. Yes, total. And this matches the reports of screams coming from the chapel area. Well, the first thing we thought was we were standing right above that, uh, that chapel area, chapel. rather. Yeah. So we thought maybe it was that. Uh, but we actually have another piece of equipment that we're able to pick it up on, a 360-degree microphone. And when we place it and when we review it, we're able to tell the direction of the sound. So I want to play that for you now. I have to say, it sounds, it, it does actually, you listen to it again, it sounds a bit like a horse. That's what I thought as well. The sounds that are coming from the city and coming from the, the countryside yeah. reverberate throughout the castle and seem to appear from, that they're coming from different places than they actually are. Yes, yeah, absolutely, because of the way the walls are built. So, with all of this said and done, it's definitely the opinion of the team that the Castillo is not haunted. Right. Yeah. Okay. You seem a little disappointed. I am, but uh, I can also see, you know, this is what you have to do. Well, we appreciate, you know, you calling us out and having us investigate. Well, no, thank you very much for coming. It's been absolutely fascinating. All right. Well, thank you, Bill. Yeah, thank you very much. All right. I would have loved to have seen what a ghost looks like on a piece of electronic equipment that sort of says, yep, that is a ghost. But at the same time, I want to thank them very, very much for clearing up a lot of the stories that are around this castle. Bill, a little disappointed. I think he was hoping we were going to find some spirits for him. Yeah, but at the same time, I think he valued us proving to him that some of these things that people are hearing uh, very well could be from just outside those castle walls. But, uh, you know, it was a good location, beautiful castle, a lot of history to it. Yeah, tons of history to it. Speaking of which, it's about that time. That's it, man. Better go on the road. Yes, sir. Hey, guys. Go ahead, Rob. As you can see, we picked an interesting day to do an investigation here in otherwise beautiful Spain. And Brandy's going to give us the details on it. We're actually headed to Cataluna, which is underneath the Pyrenees Mountains. We're headed to the Castle de Escalas, and it's a Spanish medieval tower dating back over a thousand years, and it's had a pretty violent history. Scholars believe that the main tower was once used as a hideout for refugees who fled during the genocide of the Knights Templar. Everyone who has stayed at the castle has experienced what they claim to be paranormal activity, including feeling strange presences, lights going on and off, faucets turning on and off, uh, seeing a green apparition. So, you know, there's definitely a lot of stuff that apparently is going on there. Sounds like another fantastic case. I can't wait to get started. Hi. Hi, Rob. Hi. Hi, Rob. Nice to meet you. Dustin. Hi, Dustin. Hey, Barry. Hi, Barry. Welcome to the Castle of Escalas. Yes, absolutely beautiful. Can you tell us a little bit about, like, the history of the castle? The original part of the castle was the tower, and that was built in 1050 to keep out the marauding French. That's why the walls at the base are six feet thick. It was very much a fortification. 
we understand during your stays here and many other people's stays here, some strange things have been going on. Um, would you mind taking us around and showing us where this has been going on? Okay, we'll go to the kitchen first. Okay. Okay, so here we are in the kitchen. Okay. There have been strange goings on in here with the light bulbs. Constantly, the light bulbs used to unscrew themselves. And in fact, still do. But every few weeks you go in, um, having put them in firmly, and come and find that it's unscrewed. And you screw it back in, and it works. And then it unscrews itself again. Okay, well, here we are at room one. I personally have had a few experiences, and the most recent one was in this room. Middle of the night, something woke me up, and I could hear running water. And the tap was on full, just gushing out water, which I hadn't left on. I'm going to take you to the breakfast kitchen. One summer's evening, I'd woken up between two and three in the morning, so hot. Um, so I came down the stairs, walked along here, and the whole place was really hot until I got to this area here, which was just like stepping into a fridge. It was absolutely ice cold, and I felt as though there was something there on the stairs. Has anyone else, uh, you know, given reports or mentioned anything about this area in particular? Oh, not this area, but uh, where I'll take you next, which is where lots of people experience different things. In the upper living room area, I was sitting quietly reading a book. I felt the uh, hairs on the, the back of my neck actually go, you know, suddenly something flashes by. It was like a, a black hole, if you like, moving along. And I would look and, you know, nothing's there. Outside the door of our bedroom, which was closed, I heard loud footsteps and going back and forth and then doors opening and closing. What we're going to do, we're going to go get the rest of the team. Okay. Uh, we're going to start getting set up and um, see if we can get some answers for you as to what exactly is going on. That would be fantastic. I am convinced there's a presence in the castle. I would love it if they said, yes, there is a ghost in the castle. Denise has shown us spots where activity has personally happened to her. So she really wants to get answers. If there really is a presence here, we're going to try and give her some evidence of that. Rob D. Hey, Rob, what's up? Is Grant there with you? Yeah, I'm here, Rob. What's up? We're in Spain. We're investigating this place. It's awesome. It's called Castle de Escales. Well, believe it or not, I got a plumbing question for you. <laughs> okay. In Spain? Okay. All right, so we know how a hot water faucet can turn itself on, right? It builds pressure over time. and well, Right. That and faulty seals. Exactly. All right, so here's a question for you. How would a cold faucet do the same thing? Yeah, Rob, sometimes there are bad stops on there and the pressure can build up. You can, you can spin the handle, but... Uh, yeah, but where you are, and probably the age of that faucet, I, I'd probably just try to replace the seals. All right. <laughs> Either one, fly. try one and then the other and see what happens. All right, sounds good. All right, man, be safe. Take care, Rob. All right, thanks, guys. Yeah, Rotor Ruder, we're fixing problems <laughs> in Spain. All right, let's run through the camera angles. Okay, on camera one, we're in bedroom three, where it's reported that uh, the bedroom lights are, are coming on while the people are staying there. On camera two, we're in bedroom number five. Camera number three is across in the breakfast kitchen, mm -hmm. where uh, it was reported that uh, she felt something on the stairs. Okay. Camera number four is down in the kitchen monitoring the vibration sensor. All the cameras look great, so I think we're ready to get to work, get some lights out, and uh, see what we can find. Joe and I decided to come out into the tower area and then run an EVP session. That's the area where Denise has felt a presence of some sort Pay attention, whoever's listening to this. Please, if there's anybody in here, could you please come forward? Can you come sit beside me? Did you hear it? 
you. You did? Where at? Straight ahead. Really? I heard what sounded like really heavy breathing. We can hear you breathing. Could you do it again for us, please? Please, if there's somebody here, we heard you breathing. We need to document that. Oh my gosh. What? Did you see something? I don't know if I saw a face. That Where? Was, that, it was in the distance. It was just the round face. And it was just a split second. I couldn't see any features, but I, I definitely saw something. That's crazy, Joe. Please, if that was you who just tried to show yourself to me, you definitely startled me, but I'm not afraid. Could you come forward, please? Somebody upstairs? I thought I saw a shadow. Upstairs? Right. Like, it moved. That's crazy. Please, if that was you who just tried to show yourself to me, could you come forward, please? Somebody upstairs? I thought I saw a shadow. Upstairs? Like, it moved. And okay, let's go up there. Light. There's a, a, a light on the top of the stairs, and I thought I saw a shadow pass through. It blocked the light out. You saw it? Yeah, I was looking up, up at the stairs. That's crazy. And there's no traffic going outside. There's nothing happening. I mean, it's totally like It's like a mold, you know, or anything moving. There's no breeze? No. Okay, Joe, EVP session end. We don't know what it might have been. Uh, so we're hoping that uh, with our EVP session, we were able to capture something. One of the stories that Denise shared with us was in the middle of the summer, he walks into the room, hits this intense cold spot, and it almost feels like there's a dark presence up on the stairs. This is where she walks in, three in the morning, getting something to drink because it's so hot out. She, all right, there's nothing on the stairs. Why don't we use temp gauge? You'll be Denise. I'll stay here, measure ambient air, try to isolate where the spot might be, see if there's, see if there's enough of a significant difference mm -hmm. that the human body could detect it. If this is what it is, if she's just hitting a cold front, yeah. it has to be hotter over there and colder when you come in here. Yeah. Okay. It's three in the morning, need a drink of water. What do we got for ambient air? Uh, I got 58 right now. 58, okay. 58. So she starts walking in, it drops down, drops down. What do we get to? I got 52, so six degrees difference. Anywhere else randomly in the room? 53.6. Okay, I'll get a reading here. I got 54.3, so right, without a shadow of a doubt, yeah. this area where she experiences this real cold, cold spot sensation is the coldest area of this entire room. Yeah. Now, is that definitely what happened? No. But certainly that's a viable enough alternative for me to buy into. Yeah. Bromley and I went to investigate the bathroom on the third floor. Rob had asked Jay and Grant about the reports there, and they said to check out the seals on the faucet. Okay. No. During the tour, mm. our client told us that she was lying in bed and she woke in the middle of the night and the faucet was on. She got up, came back, turned it off, and that was it for the rest of the night. And see if there's a possibility that there is a, a dodgy washer in that. Um, right, so if you let it run. Exactly. Okay. Okay, here we go. Usually what we find is that uh, people, whenever they're going to bed, they're not closing the faucet at all. Mm -hmm. So I've done the same. It's not tightly closed. There we go. There's a run. Oh, you understand there's a slight weakness that will cause a, a gusher right. to wake me up from your sleep. Okay. Let's okay. get back. 
All right, everyone. Um, before it gets any colder, we've done a great job tonight. Uh, let's get the lights on and uh, let's get out of here. I think tonight was a perfect mix. We listen to stories and we look for alternatives. But at the same time, we're definitely in a hunt to see if there's any paranormal goings on. I'm confident that the team has done a good job here tonight, and that when we speak to Denise, we will now have some answers for her about some of the mysteries that have plagued her here at the castle. We're about to go into the evidence analysis of Castile Scalas. We're going to be looking for anything paranormal that may show up in any of the equipment, both in sound, vision, and full spectrum images. But along with that, we'll also be looking for alternatives that may reflect some of the claims that the uh, client has already made against the castle. Brandy. Yeah. I think I have something here. Can you remember we were in the kitchen and the dining room? conducting an EVP session, and I had made reference to your stomach, I said, was that your stomach making really? a noise? And and it wasn't. Because we thought we had heard something and we weren't sure. Reviewing the 360, um, I've came across this. Have a listen. Oh, I absolutely hear that. <laughs> it's a dog. But at least we're not going mad. We knew we heard something. I know, I'm glad we know what it is. Uh, <laughs> oh, well. Not to worry. Good let's, uh, let's push on. Yeah. Hey guys, I have something here. It sounds like footsteps to me, but you can hear talking in the background and stuff, so it, it's not very clear. But mm -hmm. Barry, do you mind taking a listen sure. to it? And Where was this taken? Uh, room three, and it was Joe and Brandy. Okay. Yeah. I can hear that. It's very, very faint. It does resemble mm -hmm. what sounds like footsteps. But I remember doing something earlier with the 360 mic, which was much clearer. Let's just see. Okay, find it. Okay, have a listen to this. Joe, you'll remember this one, okay? Oh, yeah. Wow, you cleaned it up very nicely, and you can tell that it's pipe banging. Mm -hmm. Barry? Mm -hmm. I've got something here. So we're looking at the vibration sensor that was yep. set up in the bottom kitchen, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll it speaks for itself. That's amazing. So how are you? Fine, good, good. Uh, welcome back. Thank you. I'm really excited about what you're going to tell me. Okay, so what we've come in to do is we look for alternative explanations to all the different activity. First thing we want to show you is something that we picked up on one of the DVR cameras. This is uh, taken just in this kitchen uh, where we were told about the light bulbs uh, oh, yes, that yeah. seem to loosen themselves. All right, this is a vibration monitor. It's pretty sensitive to, to even the slightest vibration, even if we're tapping. Yeah, really sensitive. When you see the lights lighting up on the screen here, mm -hmm. that's with no one in the room. Right. However, when you watch it on the video, that's picking it up from people walking, and it was consistent throughout the evening. There were people above the kitchen walking around. So that's showing us that even foot traffic above where the lights are is getting a measurable vibration all the way down to the, the tabletop and giving just enough to, over time, loosen these sockets. I didn't think that it was possible to have vibration because it's such a solid building. Right. And that disproves that. There you go. Yeah. There is something that we wanted to show you in regards to the third floor, uh, where you told us that the sound of footsteps 
uh, were yes. being heard. Yeah. We had recorders up there, uh, our voice recorders, and I want to play for you now um, what was captured in room number three. I'll play that for you again. I want you to listen to this area. Okay. If yeah. I woke up in the middle of the night and heard that, I'm thinking because footsteps. That's... Yes, because it's slightly intermittent, isn't it? It, ha it has La that. Yeah, yeah. Great. We want to look into this further to find exactly where the sound was coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, we were able to uh, track down something down in the, uh, the lower level here on the first floor. Uh, I'll play that for you now. That's more of a rattling, isn't it? It sounds a lot different than it does up on the third floor. That's Definitely. For sure. Definitely. Uh, upon further investigation, we're actually able to find out that that is just the uh, the water pipes. The water pump that's outside, uh, when that kicks on, that is exactly what is causing this sound. Would that turn the tap on? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the water, we worked on that. A lot of times what will happen is you turn on hot water. You turn it off almost fully so that there's a small drip coming through. Over time, it'll release, and the next thing you know, it's flooding out again. Oh. Something else I'd like to discuss, the area that you walked into, where in that summer night, you felt this cold, this intense cold. Yeah. What we did was we took our temperature guns. We measured every spot along the hallway leading up to that one area that you walked into. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to guess is by far, we're talking a six degree separation, coldest spot in that area. Where I was. Really? Absolutely. Now we're not talking this whole area. We're talking the spot where you stood. You walk further into the breakfast kitchen, temperature starts going back up again. So yes. mm -hmm. you figure three in the morning, you're walking through, you hit a six degree, yeah. as much as six degree temperature change, that's massive. Yeah. We weren't there with you, but I mean, you think that's possible? Yeah, sure. We went through everything mm. that we recorded here. We're talking hours and hours and hours of audio, video, hundreds of pictures. Mm. There was nothing. How disappointing. Based on going through all the evidence, Coming up with some what we believe are viable explanations, it is the opinion of GHI that the castle is not haunted. Okay. Well, thank you for explaining it all. Absolutely fascinating. Well, thank you for having us. I mean, the oh, castle is great. Welcome. It was a good investigation for the team, mm -hmm. and we had a wonderful time there. Great. All right, Denise. Thank, thank you. you. It's been amazing finding out all this information. Uh, Truly fascinating experience. Although I'm kind of disappointed, I think. I like the idea of there being a ghost in the castle. Honestly, I did not think Denise was going to take that news as well as she did. Yeah, I tell you, man, you know, she, uh, she was really convinced by the experiences that she's had there herself. So yeah, and she was fine with it. I think, given the fact that we were able to demonstrate exactly what was going on, those situations make a good case. We can come up with good alternative explanations or evidence of the paranormal. Either way, we're doing what we were brought in to do. Yep. All right, well, Spain's been an adventure. Let's go find Brandy, find out where we're heading. That's it, man. Sounds like a plan.